the economy. I'm Rich Pison for Critical Point. Uh, it is October 21st. We just had the weekly initial jobless claims that come in in 290,000 for the week of October 16th. That was down 6,000 from the previous week and below the 300,000 Dow Jones uh, estimate. Uh, continuing claims also dropped to a new pandemic low, <clears throat> uh, falling to 2.48. And this is information I just took off the CNBC uh, website. So how does this fit in terms of our business cycle modeling of the economy, the stock market, commodities? Uh, basically, here's how the economy works relative to unemployment. Once a decade, you get a surge in unemployment because you get a recession. And normally, the economy will grow for 7 to 12 years, and then you get 1 to 3 years of recession. Recession means your country falls backwards. It's not moving forward. It's losing ground. It's losing value. People are losing some jobs. They're losing in some of their investments. And then we just repeat. We start all over again. And the point is, around 2020 or so, the model is saying, we're due for one of those decade spikes in unemployment. And we're due for a recession. So we knew it was coming. We didn't realize it was going to be a virus pandemic. And we were looking for just a modest recession. But the point is we knew it could be worse. It can always be worse. So the model couldn't help us with the virus side. No one saw a virus recession coming. Nobody ever heard of such a thing. Okay. But the point is it occurred, the virus occurred at the time we were going to have a recession Anyways, and the interesting thing is I look at these charts on the CNBC website of this uh, jobless claims. What I find is that it shows a very high number January 2021. Okay, let me double check that. I was thinking 2020. Uh, yeah, January 2021. You can see it's high off of that pandemic, but it's been moving lower almost every week. And what happens is the unemployment rate, the percent of unemployment, can decline quickly after that surge, then it slows down and can take several years. It could take seven to 12 years to get to its lowest level and to get into the range of what's called full employment. And while that's occurring, while it's coming down, the stock market generally just goes up. So the unemployment away is not that important in the stock market, that it just generally wants to see unemployment is working lower and it picks up on the fact more and more people going back to work, more and more people being hired, more and more money's flowing through the system, and there's more and more business, and therefore more profits, and the companies do good, and therefore the stock market goes up. And then we get that next surge, that next recession, and we get a bear market in the stock market. And that's the way it's worked throughout the history of this country. I find evidence over in Europe it was probably that way for hundreds of years. <laughs> uh, so the bottom line is this business cycle is for real. And it's really created by you and I, not the Fed, not the government. The government, the Fed, and all this political nonsense that's usually around adds to or takes away from that business cycle. It can make it better, not as good. When it, when the, and when it turns down, it can make it worse or not as severe, okay? But it doesn't destroy it, and the Fed doesn't destroy it. The Fed's greatest impact is to keeping us from falling into a depression and containing that recession so it doesn't get so serious. And so that's rather useful distortion. The overall length, duration, the timing of this in the cycle, the Fed hasn't changed anything. You can see the same cycle before the Fed was even created, before 1913, okay? So in my opinion, there's nothing going on here. I realize a debt ceiling could cause a crashing market, but somehow we'll recover, life will go on. But hopefully we won't go down that path because it can do some long-term damage on terms of how good the business cycle will work, but it's unlikely going to destroy it. So most of this negative news, the negative politics, the negative media, uh, all of that's just going to cause dips in the stock market, okay? And they're probably going to be by the dips. We're still long-term bullish to late this decade because it's really late this decade when the next recession can occur, when the economy can peak, and when we can get peak demand for stocks. In other words, nobody wants to pay any higher than that. And the next thing you know, we got the bad news of recession and everybody wants to sell. 
And the point is you can put this to your advantage, whether you're a short-term trader or a long-term investor, you can put this advantage to be part of the bull market as well as to protect yourself from a bear market. You can use it in your own career, jobs, businesses, and your savings accounts and whatever of knowing, hey, once a decade, I might have a greater risk of losing my job, getting paid cuts or something. Things could get a little crazy, okay? And the interesting thing is, every other one of those decade down moves is a little more important than the others, but it's difficult to predict whether it will be that way or not. But as we look at multiples of these decade down swings, you know, several in a row, we do pick up patterns where it does get more serious. And one of those was in 2008, 2009 with the financial crisis. We may have another one coming up at the end of this decade, but it also, we have alternate scenarios that's going to take a little bit longer than that. And we also got scenarios that it won't be as severe as in prior uh, downturn, uh, cyclical downturns because we're learning how to manage our economy, our financial markets. We've been able to print money. And the money printing, all it's done is maybe make, created more upside of that business cycle, less downside of that business cycle, but it really, other than that, has not distorted it. There is a strong correlation, better than ever. And there is this concept among economists, and I'm now one of them, that the problem with capitalism is it runs out of money. So a lot of people say, well, we shouldn't be printing money because that creates the next problem, but it's actually the next problem almost mandates, requires us to print more money. Otherwise, we don't get the economic boom. So be careful what you wish for if you're anti-printing money because you might find you're going to be in a stagnant economy for decades that really the system doesn't work that well. Uh, very interesting things to discuss here in the future in terms of money printing, government fed versus uh, everyone else, those kind of scenarios. But in the meantime, however, at least today's news is encouraging the people are getting back to work. I don't think they're all going to come back to work. We've changed something significant. And we're going to change how we're working, at least in office buildings. The remote side of things is here to stay, the remote working. So there's some new news and you could almost argue we got a new economy, okay? But the interesting thing is people don't really change that much. Therefore, they don't push and shove the markets around and the economy around all that much different. Even though you've got new news, even though you may have evidence of a brand new economy that you haven't seen before, it's interesting people are still going to buy and sell, get jobs, go to the store the way they always had. And prices can only do one or two things, up or down. That is the bottom line. All right. Uh, hopefully, if you're not a subscriber, get on board here. Give us a chance. I think you'll probably be staying with us throughout this decade and see where we go with this bull market and then an eventual bear and recession. Okay. Have a great day. Past results not necessarily indicative of future results. Thank you.